our chief legal analyst, Khalif Rhodes, joining us now. Khalif, this seems like uh, it, it should never have been put on paper. Nobody wants to pay. That's the first thing I'll say. And mm -hmm. so I, I, I used to handle personal injury cases years ago, and I'd always tell my clients when they walk in that you pay your insurance all the time, every year in case something happens. And then in the instance that something happens, it's their obligation to compensate you, to make you feel whole. Oftentimes that portion of the process is not as easy as you would think especially as when there's an incident like an automobile accident um, or wrongful death or something like that. In this incident where they're suing and they're trying to hold you accountable, it's, it places the defense attorney in a really awkward position. While, yes, they are rolling that back, you got to be able to put some defense up for your client. And so if you're saying that I've alleged that your client has done X, Y, and Z, failed to maintain a properly secured location, had an employee that you didn't do a background check, and you should have known, knew or should have known that he would have had a propensity to do these types of things, well, what type of defenses do you have? Most of the time your defense will be to blame someone else and that someone else in this situation is the kid. Obviously that didn't pan out too well for them in the court of public opinion and that's why they're rolling those statements back. But Khalif, isn't there a process where the attorney has a diligence to show their client, hey, this is what we're going to present before they file something? Because somebody had a flag this thing, maybe not blaming the child is the best opinion here. Typically you have an obligation to ensure, especially in like a defense case, um, or I mean I should say a civil case if there's an offer. So if there's an offer for settlement, I have an obligation, a duty to let you know, look, this offer's been made. We know it's a low ball offer. We know we didn't like it. I can't just reject it without telling you. Mm -hmm. In terms of the normal process, answering a complaint, which is a normal process, there's a complaint issued. You have a time frame to answer. Typically, your client wouldn't look at that information because you're just responding. You're responding to the allegations there in the complaint. You're denying most of those and you're attempting to point blame. What you're not attempting to do is throw a toddler under the bus or mm. someone else that's a, a kid under the bus. Um, you're attempting to put a defense forward that puts your client in a position to get the case dismissed, stating, hey, they don't even have a claim. That's the first place you would normally start. And then second, if they have a claim, Your Honor, this is why this case should not move forward. And then finally, if the case moves forward, here are our defenses to these claims. That's typically what's in the answer. Most of the time, it's pretty boilerplate. It's just going to really answer the questions that they've asked in their initial complaint. But you really don't see this kind of mudslinging in the beginning, not yeah. at all.